Lord God, here we are before your throne. We're so blessed and glad that we can go to you, that we have this recourse, that we can pray and commune with you, talk with you, and that you desire, you, the great King of Kings, desire us to come before you in prayer. God, thank you for this time we have this morning. God, I pray that you will bless it. Father, we need strength. We need wisdom. We need courage. Father, we want to please you, be a people that are pleasing to you. <clears throat> but you know we're weak. Lord, I pray that uh, your Holy Spirit will be here this morning, that this is not a club. This is a church, the body of Christ. Lord, we trust that you will work powerfully in our hearts, in our minds. Lord, we want to have your thoughts through this difficult time. Lord, I pray for blessing and healing on everybody here. We pray for protection on everybody in our church and on uh, the extended people, the people that are related to the people in our church and ultimately on our community. And we pray your blessing and protection on our nation. And Lord, we pray your blessing and protection on this world, which is caught in something very dangerous and scary right now. Lord, I pray that somehow, it seems like whenever it gets really dark and people say, where's God? They always see you. And Lord, we're asking to see you in the middle of this. And we pray, Lord, that there would be revival, that people would be shaken and they would see their need for the cross and your son, Jesus Christ, that people would confess their sins to you, Lord, that they would come running to your banner, Lord. And Father, we pray that untold millions of people would find their hope and faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, let your people represent you well. Father, I pray that the theme song of our life is you, that the ground we stand on is you, that we, we plant our banner on your truth, Lord, and we don't move. Lord, I pray that our allegiance is not with anything earthly. Our allegiance, our ultimate allegiance, Lord, I should say, is always with you. Father, please bless us and help us to be blessings to other people. Lord God, we want to fear only you and nothing else. We pray this in your name. Thank you for blessing our church for 17 years. We ask that you would come back soon. If you don't, please give us the strength and ability to serve you and lift high the cross for decades to come. In your name we pray, amen. I don't know about you, but I thought the songs we changed sang had uh, the, the lyrics kind of hit you a little head harder today, didn't they? Those were meaningful. Well, I'm going to ask you guys to bear with me because today's message is different than usual. And uh, you know we're going to be going online. And I, I want to do a couple things with the online ministry. I want to give us some normalcy. And so we're going to keep going through Romans. I'm loving it too much. I'm going to keep studying the book of Romans, and we're going to go through there. But also, we're going to be talking about what we're going through as a country and as a world right now. And uh, I can't tell you when we get back to normal, because no country has gotten back to normal yet. Uh, it could be. I'm hopeful that this goes away like a normal flu in the spring, and then we have all summer for the government to prepare for it, the, uh, for, for it to come back next fall. Uh, the, the slight concern I have is that I'm seeing jungle and desert countries with high infection rates. But they're much lower than northern climate countries, and so it could ease up for us when the summer comes. I don't know. There are, there are other things that could bring us back to normalcy, and we're going to discuss these things. If you guys uh, are, are enjoying the online material, I'm going to step that up quite a bit. 
uh, so that we can be connected. Uh, emails, uh, live, ch live broadcasts, uh, different, different ways we can connect with that. And, and I want us to really feel that we are united and that we're going through this uh, together as God's people. Uh, today's message is called A Family Chat About Coronavirus. Uh, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Uh, please don't leave. I believe that the content, I believe the content we have this morning will be blessed by God. So I wanted to do a little, I wanted to do things differently, but it wasn't working out. We needed to talk about this. While I worked on my sermon in my office, my four children, Megumi, Chie, Aiko, and Aaron, were laughing and having a blast in the living room playing on the Wii. Uh, and it was domestic bliss. Uh, I, it's been a while because Megumi and Chi are in Madison, so it's been a while since they've been home like that, and Aaron loves his sister so much and was just wanting to play. And finally, they got to play, and it was not a distraction. Well, it was distracting, but it was not a distraction in the sense that it was well, why are they making noise while I'm making my sermon? It was domestic bliss. I loved it. I enjoyed it. And uh, after that settled down, I didn't want to cut them off in the middle of their laughter, but after it settled down, they, I said, I want us to have a family time. We're going to pray together because we're at the onset. And how are we going to respond to this as a family? Today, I want to have a family chat. How are we as a, ch a church going to respond? Brothers and sisters, faith check. How are we going to respond when things don't go the way we want? When this life is not the life you signed up for? How will we as sons and daughters of the king who hung on the cross for people who hated him and spit at him, how will we react maybe to a world full of hysteria? A world gone crazy with compassion, with love? How will we treat people we believe are not being wise enough or serious enough about COVID-19? See, the question works the other way around. doesn't matter where you're at. I want to know how you're going to treat people. Brothers and sisters, if you are stuck in your home with your family or your spouse, what a wonderful opportunity to get things right. Love each other deeply. Practice forgiveness. Practice patience. And I want you to guard your hearts. If you're in the camp that thinks this is all hysteria, how is your heart towards your fellow brothers and sisters? How's your attitude towards other people? And if you're in the camp of saying, what is wrong with these people? Why can't they just look at the numbers? And you're thinking, they're not taking this seriously enough. I want you to think, what is your heart? What is your attitude towards these people? The question works both ways. If you think this is going to be a time of trial for our planet, it already is. How will you treat those who think this will be no worse than the common cold? And if you think that people are overreacting and the panic is worse than the illness, and I think it very well could be uh, if we see, you know, just, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to go off my notes a lot today and, and don't time me. We're going to talk today. And, and we're going to talk today because I love you guys and I don't know when we're going to see each other in person again. How will we treat, treat people that we think are just freaking out? Will it be with love? Will it be with respect? We're going to take a look at some scripture and we're going to have a family chat and talk about how we as a church family, as people who trust Christ. Do you trust Christ? I'm going to ask you to put up your hand. Do you trust Christ? Amen. Everybody raise their hand. As people who trust Christ, how should we act in troubling times? Whether you think this trouble is generated by the media or you think it's real trouble, and I don't want to give a false equivalency. I do not think this is generated by the media. Uh, maybe you saw the article by Newt Gingrich. He's an old, the older folks know him as an old time conservative. He was famous. Uh, his present wife is, uh, is the ambassador to the Vatican for the United States. 
And uh, he, so he's in Italy. He said, United States, you have to go now and you have to go big. Think of this as World War III. You must prepare as if this is World War III before it's too late. He just, he said, uh, they've canceled, many countries in Europe, they've canceled funerals. You can't gather, they've canceled weddings. You can't gather together. Uh, church services canceled all over Europe. This is, uh, so I don't want to give a false equivalency. Uh, but regardless, it doesn't matter to me which side of that you fall on. How's your heart? How's your attitude? Turn with me now to Romans chapter 6. That's where we've been the last few weeks. Romans chapter 6. One great commission pastor said, pastors are supposed to lead. That means going where not everybody's willing to follow yet. Turn with me to Romans uh, 6.21. So, what benefit did you reap? What, what did you then reap for those things that you are now ashamed of? So, what, what's Paul doing here? He's talking to uh, people that are there's maybe first-generation Christians. Uh, he did not start this church, which is interesting. So at different times, he's talking to Jewish believers. At other times, he's talking to all believers. Sometimes he's talking specifically to Gentile believers because there was a rift in that church. But it's interesting. If you look earlier in chapter 6, he, even though he did not start that church, he has not had a lot of influence in that church, he just says, you know, it's like baptism. He expected that all of them would have been water baptized. That was the mark of a Christian at that point in Christian history. So, so he says... What benefit did you then reap from those things you're now ashamed of? In other words, before you were a Christian and you lived a certain way, how'd that work for you? What did you get out of it? What, what good came of that? <clears throat> so you had your, your things the way you used to live. I'm just living for the almighty dollar. I'm just living for number one. I just got to make myself happy. I got to look out for myself. What benefit did you reap for that? These things that you're ashamed of now. See, being ashamed of it is, is part of being, uh, having the mind of Christ. Oh, yeah, that worldly mindset is, is wrong. It's not right. For the end of these things is death. Paul said the end of it is death. He's talking about, uh, <coughs> a believer who's holding on to his past life as an unbeliever uh, why would you expect your relationships to be blessed? Why would you expect to raise godly children? Why would you expect to walk in peace or joy when we're doing the things, the sinful things, that non-Christians do that lead to death? Guys, we've talked about this for years. As sin goes up, the ability to give and receive love goes down. We become cold, we become arrogant, we become critical and judgmental. Uh, sin results in the death of hope. Sin results in the death of peace. Sin results in the death of joy. Uh, you know, the, but the, the good news is, is it goes the other way too. <coughs> as, as gratitude towards God increases, as thankfulness towards God increases, we find ourselves full of God. There's less room for bitterness, isn't there? More gratitude, less bitterness, less anger, less, less unforgiveness. So it, it goes both ways, and this is, this is like spiritual gravity. These are spiritual laws of nature, just like there are physical laws of nature. But Paul is saying the end of these sinful things is death, and ultimately we're talking about uh, separation from God for non-believers. If you don't get right with God, brothers and sisters, friends, in your heart, you know you're messed up, right? Aren't we all a nasty piece of work sometimes? We're broken. Let's think about your life. You're broken inside, right? Why do you get so angry? Why is it so hard to forgive? Why do you get bitter? We always say a spiritually mature person is not easily offended. It's when, we're, when we're full of ourselves, we're like two sumo wrestlers trying to fit in a Volkswagen bug. What are we doing? We're always bumping each other with our egos we got to get rid of all of that. <coughs> <clears throat> For those who are new here, I've been coughing since November. 
<coughs> Actually, I've been coughing since about 1989. Uh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. It reminds me of Jesus Christ's words in Mark chapter 8, uh, 37, 36. 36, 37. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Boy, you could get everything. You could get that car you wanted. You could get that gal you wanted. You could get that house you wanted, the job you wanted. You could, have, you could be the most popular person. You could actually not just be the richest person in the world. You could be the person that owns the world. And Jesus said, what would it profit you if you lost your soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? What are you going to give in exchange for your soul? What, what is worth it in this life to miss out on God? Uh, okay, Romans 6, 21 through 23. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you're now ashamed of? How did those things work out for you? Living as a non-Christian, hard-headed, uh, mean, judgmental, critical, how did that work for you? Did it bring blessing? Were you a curse to other people or were you a blessing to other people? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness. That means being good like God, and results in eternal life. Well, we want eternal life, don't we? Uh, life with God forever. Uh, life, not just, not just living in uh, Beloit forever. This is eternal life. Not just living in Janesville or Milton or Madison forever. This is eternal life the way it was meant to be, with joy and confidence and peace and hope with the Father. And then, and then Paul says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So you have a job. The wages are what you earn. You work hard, you get paid by the boss. Do you know that, guys, guys, that's not a gift. He's not giving you a gift. You earn that. You worked hard. You get, you work, and then it's a, it's a transaction. You work and you get money. Paul is saying here, the wages of sin, what's sin? It's a religious word. Sin is all the things I say and I do that are contrary to the will of God. That God has his way and his heart. This is out of sync with his character. Sin is all the things I say and do and, and, and think that are detrimental to myself and detrimental to the people around me. We have this brokenness inside and the wages of that sin is death. And again, it's death of joy. It's death of relationships. It's death of friendships. It's death of peace. It's death of all good things. And ultimately, he's talking about eternal separation from the living God. You don't want to be separated from God. Everything good comes from God. God's the creator. The love and everything comes from God. And you don't want to face eternity separated from God. The sin, and I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. We all have sin. Sin separates us from death. We cannot get to heaven because we're not good enough to go to heaven. God's standard is perfection. We fall short of that, very, very far short of God's standard. But then next it says, but, however, the gift of God, the present of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Get right with God and do it today. In your heart say, Lord God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've screwed up. I know I've done, said and done hurtful things. I even treat the people I love badly. Lord God, forgive me. And he will, because Jesus took your sin upon himself. He suffered and he died for you because he loves you. Listen, it's not just this theological love, God loves you. God actually likes you. How do I know that? Because he wants you to be with him forever. God loves you. He likes you. He bled for you. And today is the day of salvation. Don't miss it. Jesus Christ is offering his hand to everybody. Grab a hold of his hand. Take the salvation. So are you a Christian? A Christian is a person who's decided to follow Jesus. I want a show of hands. Are you a Christian? Amen. Are you a Christian? Then here's God's plan for your life. 
1 Peter 2.9, you are a chosen people. You who just raised your hand, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We call this foundation nation. Well, across the globe, we're part of all these different churches that are a holy nation for the living God. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. I always called Chie from when she was little because you know what? The middle child can be forgotten. So when she was so small and we were living in Japan, I called her Tokubetsu Chie-chan. And all that means is special Chie. And I called her special Chie because I didn't want her to get lost between the older one and the younger one. So she's always been Tokubetsu Chie-chan. God says, you are my Tokubetsu people. This is Japanese, Tokubetsu. You are God's special possession. He owns you like a treasure. You're his special people. God rejoices to have you in his family. God is thrilled to have you in his family. You're God's special possession. So that, so why are you a Christian? Why, why are we here? So that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. You are a Christian, not so that you can just reap all the benefits to yourself. That's not the way it works. Jesus didn't say, Come to me, and I will make you not, you know, he made us fishers of men, right? Go out there and get people. He didn't say, come unto me so that you can ignore other people. You're here as a believer so you can declare the praises of God. You can say, God is good. Jesus forgave me. Heaven's doors are open wide, and you can go in too. Join me at the foot of the cross. So we want to call people out of the darkness. We declare his praises into the darkness because we are in the light. You belong to God so that you can do this. Amen? Amen. 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 So guys, watch the bitterness on Facebook. You're not being light. How about when people cut you off in the grocery store and grab that last roll of TP? <laughs> Be the light. Be the light in the darkness. If God's people aren't going to bring the light, who do you think is going to bring it? You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. You are royal when life is not going the way you wanted it, when you didn't sign up for this. This is not what I wanted. And we are supposed to declare and represent and stand for the kingdom right in the middle of the darkness. Esther, this is beautiful. She was a gorgeous woman on the inside and the outside, and, and she was in the harem of this powerful king, the most powerful man in the world. And she was told, who knows but you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. I just called you a royal priesthood. Are you a Christian? You're royal. You're a priest. Who knows but you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Her job was to save the people of Israel at that time. She was put in that spot at that time to represent the Lord. Speak up, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. Be a light. These are dark days. Let Christ shine in you. Let Christ shine through you. Who knows but that you're at your workplace when everybody else is freaking out, you're in that neighborhood, you're in that grocery store so that you can represent Jesus Christ. And somebody says, there's no hope. And you said, I have hope in Jesus Christ. This world is not my home. You know, we've been praying as a church. Listen to me now. We've been praying as a church for two and a half months about how each one of us should be using our social media to draw attention to Christ. From pre-Christians to and, and non-believers, we want them to see Jesus. Now, I want you to look at your tweets and look at your Facebook posts. Not right now. <laughs> I want you to look at your tweets and your Facebook posts over the last two months. Are we doing and saying things that will distract people from God? Are we feeding the darkness? Are we feeding the bitterness? Are we just want to be real cool and draw attention to ourselves? Or are we drawing people closer to God? Are we a distraction or are we drawing people closer to God? Are we just, or are we just a silly, meaningless buzz? Because our music's saying nothing. If we don't represent, if we don't repent and represent now, when scientists and government officials are urging 
people to practice social distancing and stay at home, if we're not willing to represent Christ now online, then when will we spend our on online influence to lift up the cross of Christ? This is called a dramatic pause so that you can answer that for yourself. If I don't spend whatever little influence I have with friends and acquaintances and just people I've connected with online to point to Jesus Christ now, when am I ever going to spend that? Waiting for the right moment, Pastor. Some of you are thinking, uh, Tuesday? <laughs> or maybe you're thinking, I was really planning to come out strongly for Christ in 2024. What, what is this, just random numbers? Now is just not the right time for me to focus attention on Christ in my online presence. If we won't seize this moment when the world is afraid, when this is a time of fear and danger, then when were we planning to finally start representing Christ online? Sisters, brothers, you may be saying to yourself this morning, I don't think this whole coronavirus thing will be so bad. It's just going to kill old people. <laughs> Thin out the herd. Hand out some Darwin Awards. We'll see who makes it. Bring it on. No. That's called dark humor. Well, that was actually not even that humorous. All right. Thank you. Guys, if you're thinking this is no big deal, you're missing the point. You're missing the point of what I'm talking about. Let's say this virus acts differently than it did in Asia and Europe, and we get off easy. I, I like that. Uh, we, don't have a, we don't have a precedent for it, but I'm ready, you know, uh, to get let off easy. So what? Shouldn't we still be sharing the gospel? Isn't that the point? Even if, it, even, if the go even if this virus doesn't act up in Janesville, Wisconsin, we should be sharing the gospel as much as we can. Shouldn't we be pointing people to the cross at all times as best as we can? Of course, we should be using all the influence God has given us to draw people nearer to Jesus Christ so their sins can be forgiven and they can go to heaven and they can have eternal life. They can be part of the family. We should do this during a crisis, obviously. But seriously, what is the rationale behind waiting for a crisis anyway? Chapter and verse, you're welcome to text me later. I'll be waiting a long time. <laughs> Last week, we read in Titus 2.14, it reads, He gave himself for us. He, Jesus, he gave himself on that cross for us. He laid down his life for us to set us free from every kind of lawlessness. The dead end thing. I, I, I do something foolish. I, I say something to my family that just hurts them. And what do I do? Boom! Hit my head on that wall again. What do I do? Oh, that hurt. Boom! I hit my head on that wall again. And we do the same things again and again. And Christ came to set us free from all of that garbage and to purify for himself. See, this is that tokubetsu idea. This special possession. Jesus said, I want a people for myself, a people who are truly his, who are eager to do good. Let that percolate in your soul. I want to be a person who's eager to do good. I want to represent the kingdom of God. I don't want to waste my days. And we need to ask ourselves, is doing good, pleasing God, a high priority for me? Is it the priority for me, even during a plague? Our church, our city, our state, Wisconsin, whenever I talk to internationals, I always tell them I'm from Wisconsin. The United States and the world are taking such draconian measures right now to try and slow down this virus uh, so that a couple months from now we can say, was that all? See, that's the goal of the church shutdown. A, the, a good result means you guys saying, Dan, we overreacted. Yeah, thank God. You know, I'm glad. I'm, I'm happy to be wrong. But when it comes to, a, uh, this, was, this was, again was from Newt Gingrich. He said, when it comes to a pandemic, it's better to overreact than underreact. So the goal is 
all these shutdowns really, really help. And we say, well, that was kind of a bad flu season, but I'm glad we're through it. That's what I want. That's what I'm praying for. Uh, I want to confess to you. It's dangerous to confess. I'm going to confess. Uh, Brothers and sisters, sometimes I'm scared. Can I confess that? Is this a safe spot? I hope so, because I don't want to ever stand before you and, and lie and pretend. I haven't been doing that for 17 years. I don't want to start now. Do you think that me lying would glorify God somehow? I don't think my lies bring glory to God. Sometimes I'm braver than others, uh, ups and downs, but I want to honor God through this. And I want to be a blessing to my wife, Yumi, who's my best friend and the wisest person I've ever met. I want to be a blessing to my kids. I want to be a blessing to my church. I want to be a blessing to my friends. Now listen, I struggle with being a blessing to y'all in good times. I struggle with being a blessing as much as I should be to my family in good times. I want to I wanna nail this landing. Guys, right now is the moment to nail the landing. Church, I want to pass this test. You want to do it with me? Let's live out our faith in this time of trial. Let's pass this test. Whatever comes, I want to please my Savior. I take comfort in the fact that even when I've been afraid or unsure in the past, I can look back and see a track record. God's been with me. I told my kids I'm afraid, but if I look at my life, I, God helps me make the right choices. God's always been faithful to me. That means a lot to me right now. Not, I'm not saying that he's always going to do what I want him to do. God, everybody in my church has survived this. God, everybody in Janesville has survived this. God, everybody in Wisconsin has survived this. Otherwise, you're letting me down. Can't do that. I'm not as healthy. You guys know that I have chronic coughing, that I, I get a cold that you guys have for a few days or a couple weeks. I hold on to it for months. This has been, you guys know me for 17 years. This is the way I do it. I'm not as healthy as I want. But I trust that he will empower me to do what he wants me to do, even when I'm afraid sometimes. I don't always get my prayers answered the way I want. But when I pray in his will, God, I want to represent you no matter what happens. He tends to always answer those prayers. Job 13, 15, Job says, Though he, God, slay me, yet I will hope in him. Do you have faith like that? Well, I have faith as long as God gives me what I want. That's not what I asked. And besides, any superstition, any pagan religion has faith like that. I'm asking, do you trust God? Though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. I want to be like Isaiah. There was a time of trouble in his nation, and God called out, God called, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? God saying, who is going to be my man in Janesville? Who's going to be my girl in, in, in Madison? Who's going to be my person in Milton? God's calling, who's going to represent me? And Isaiah answered, here I am, send me. Can you do that in your heart? God's saying, who's going to represent at work? Who's going to represent in your neighborhood? Who's going to represent on Facebook? And you say, here I am, use me. Lord God, I repent of living for myself. I think it might be good for everybody in our church to say amen at this point. Amen. 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 Sisters, brothers, Perhaps you've been brought to this point in your life for such a time as this. Nail the landing. Pass the test. You've been training your whole life as a Christian for this, to honor God in good times and in hard times. It would be wonderful if our nation never has to go through a time like this again in our lifetimes. I'd like to be one and done, right? Get through this, we're done. We may have multiple trials come upon us in rapid order. We don't have a promise from God. I'm 51 years old. When I was a child, the Vietnam War was still going on. I remember the day Columbine hit, that school, school shooting. I fell on the ground. I was standing there. I thought I was fine. I thought this didn't affect me. I looked at myself in the mirror, and boom, the next thing I knew, I was on the ground, and I was crying. What 
has happened to my country. And we've had many, 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 many school shootings since. We've had 9-11. We've had the wars in the Middle East that seem like they never end. You know, right now, it seems like this could be a doozy that we're in. This could be this generation's World War II. Maybe you disagree. That's fine. Time will tell, and actually, I'm cheering for you. I hope you're right. Uh, but the question is, are we up for the test? Will we vent outrage on our fellow Americans or at our church or at God? God, why are you letting this happen? Will we despair? Will we mock other believers because they're not taking it seriously enough or they're taking it too seriously? Or will we look down on everybody who's so silly and making this into a bigger deal than it is? So you listen to me, the virus if it's really bad, some of us may die. Next time we're together, the church may be different. If it isn't so bad, we probably won't. And we will celebrate when we get together and say, you know what? I really, really like worshiping together. I really missed hearing the worship team. Either way, that's not the main issue here today. The main issue is how God's children respond in this situation. Is everybody following me? Come what may. Coronavirus is not the story. Coronavirus is just the stage, and we're going to act like Christians on this stage. Amen? Amen? Coronavirus is not the story. It's just the stage. How well will you and I play our parts in God's plan for His people? Because we could blow it in a lot of different ways. Fear, Fear is a cruel master. Greed, anger, frustration, bitterness, pride, it's so easy to blow it. All of these things and more could sprout in our lives during times of pestilence. It could kill our bodies, but far worse if it kills our faith or our witness or our brotherly love. That would be giving the virus more power than it deserves. That would be giving this virus authority in my life. And I already have a king. Amen. I don't want anybody to have authority over Jesus Christ in my life. How uh, we could blow it in so many ways, but by contrast, let's look at the fruit of the Spirit. We looked at the fruit of the Spirit last week. The Spirit, this, this fruit, these good things that grow up in our lives when we're close to Jesus. We, we move close to Jesus and these things come out in our life. <coughs> I'm going to read them in verse, reverse order today to keep the list fresh because no one wants fruit that isn't fresh. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Don't wait for somebody else to bring self-control into your life. Self-control means you do it yourself. Self-control, gentleness. Well, pastor, I leave gentleness to other people. I'm not that kind of person. Oh, well, you're, you're not. You don't have the fruit of the Spirit. Faithfulness. Are you a faithful person? Are you a trustworthy person? Are you a dependable person? Are you a, a person of your word? Do you stick with it through thick or thin, or are you gone? Are you like a, a broken reed? Somebody tries to lean on you like they're leaning a cane, and it just snaps and pierces their hand. Goodness. I want to be a good person. Do you? Kindness. Patience, peace, joy, and love. Last week, again, we read from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'm going to say this, rejoice. You know why he said it two times? Because sometimes we're not good at rejoicing. But it's one of those spiritual laws. More rejoicing in the Lord. There's more good fruit there. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness... Your ability to be, act and speak and be reasonable, your ability to be con convinced, be known to everyone. The Lord is close by. Do not be anxious about anything. They were living at a time when they were going to be persecuted by the Roman Empire. Uh, Aaron Williams said they would light up the world because they'd be tied to posts and Nero would set them on fire and they'd light up the night. Don't be anxious about anything, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, here's that gratitude again, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, can't have the peace without the thankfulness. If you're always complaining, you won't have the peace. You can't have the peace without being thankful to God. America is a big country. We're like 50 different nations, actually. When I look over at Europe and the situation they're in, I see that not every one of their countries is dealing with this as bad as the other ones. Some are worse, some are better. So guys, instead of thinking of ourselves as one country, some places are going to be better, some places are going to get worse. Right now, the East Coast and the West Coast is worse than, than the middle. But we're like 50 different nations. Some states may have it easier than others in the coming days. Some states may have better plans or practice isolation better. Uh, you know, Italy is uh, setting up tent hospitals in their parks because there's not enough room, not even close to enough room in the hospitals for everybody. And I just heard uh, today that the governor of, of uh, California, is give, they've given him the right so he can just grab a hotel, <laughs> grab, grab hotels and start using them as hospitals over there. That's a good thing. So we might get uh, luckier here in southern Wisconsin, but we should prepare our hearts to honor God, to honor Christ either way. We honor Christ if things go well. We honor Christ if things don't go well. If the panic is the worst part of it, or if the virus is the worst part of it, we resolve to love God and love people. Can we do that? If the panic is the worst, if the virus is the worst, I will love God and I'm going to love other believers. Can we do that? Do you remember uh, the scene in The Lord of the Rings? Uh, the book was a little different. I think in the book he's talking to Frodo, and in the movie he was talking to Pippin, maybe. It, anyways, uh, in these Lord of the Rings books, it's fantasy books, but <clears throat> if you see the movie, there's the, one of the main characters, he's talking to this wizard in, in the, his robes, you know, with a pointed hat, and the wizard's name is Gandalf, and, and the, the, the one character says, I wish this didn't happen in my lifetime because they were facing a horrific war. It was going to destroy everything. And Gandalf, this wizard, his wise reply, so do I, and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is, to do, is what to do with the time that is given us. I want to end by reading some verses from a prayer by the prophet Habakkuk. You can pray with me in your heart. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat those, repeat those great deeds in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timon, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and His praises filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from His hand where his power was hidden. Plague went before him. Pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains crumbled. The age-old hills collapsed, but he marches on forever. You uncovered your bow. You called for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared and lifted its waves on high. Sun and moon stood still in the heavens at the glint of your flying arrows, at the lightning of your flashing spear. In wrath, you strode through the earth, and in anger, you threshed the nations. I heard, and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones, and my legs trembled. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine. Though the olive crop fails and the field produces no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. Amen. Family, thank you for being patient while we had this little talk together.